I am the cybersecurity consultant and currently I am managing a couple of projects as well as there are some initiative also going on in the organization where we have to take care of certain different kind of projects which is definitely kind of small, medium, big, it depends on the requirement. The purpose here to discuss about this situation in the cybersecurity that whenever we get any project, we certainly talk about those firewalls, we talk about the security measures, the security posture, that how we are going to design the security or the firewall or all sort of application security that can help us to protect our identity, protect our data. But when we discuss about the data, nobody, I mean, I personally have an experience, very less people usually discuss about the storage. And that is exactly we are going to learn today in our AZ104 certification. Hello guys, my name is Harsh Jangra and we'll discuss more and more in details, including the management, security, and obviously how we're going to start working with the Microsoft Azure storage. So in this particular video, we are not just going to discuss about, okay, this is the storage, this is how we are going to start working on it, because it's so easy, I mean, freaking easy. Uh, if you don't even remember, I highly suggest you to simply go back to my AZ900 certification videos, and there you can find out the, uh, the discussion about the Azure storage accounts, which is absolutely uh, was in detail but in that particular videos you can find out what are azure storage accounts how we're going to use it obviously the type of the storage and how we're going to start using it as a kind of a, like you know very layman very basics about the storage but i have not touch base the discussion over the security what are the other features being offered by microsoft azure and frankly in 2024 the microsoft azure team has introduced many and i mean various new features which definitely need to help us in day-to-day -day life while managing our projects there's a discussion going on around the globe that whenever we choose uh, you know the azure storage we never i mean Generally, we don't discuss about, okay, now we have the storage, how we're going to use our storage for the best purposes for our projects so that the client would be happy, our, I mean, the organization team would be happy with the response that you have done enough investigation before to provide those details, which is absolutely so important for any kind of project. That is exactly what we are going to learn in this one, because I'm sure guys, it's not just about the theoretical concepts. It's all about how you're going to leverage these different kind of storage options that you have in Microsoft Azure so that you can certainly come to the, you know, exact, exact point where uh, your storage is going to be, you know, safe secure and obviously functional the other thing which is uh, <laughs> okay I'm, I'm was i was quite serious but uh, this is something very special for everyone uh, those are actually uh, i mean watching this video for the first time that when we discuss about the storage account obviously there's are always questions that okay what is the storage account i'll give you an example just in a minute uh, obviously then why we need to use it obviously we'll discuss about it why we need azure storage accounts and <laughs> that, that is a very basic question how we are going to play with the azure storage account in the microsoft azure so that you have firmly you know the accessibility of each and every available feature that can be so uh, useful in terms of uh, managing securing and obviously utilizing those storage options so while discuss about the azure storage option i'd like to tell you that we have a different kind of storage options available Obviously, there are two ways that you can access your storage accounts. One is via REST API, where most of the application developer actually works in this scenario. And let me just give you another kind of example that why we are discussing today about the Azure storage account, which is very much crucial part of the examination as well as the real world too. So, uh, Okay, I mean, I have my personal experience whenever we discuss about uh, the storage and especially the requirement comes from the organization and they said, hey, Hirsch, uh, we are looking for a kind of a storage which can uh, 
globally accessible this is some kind of functionality that we are looking for obviously it is uh, much more convenient for the user and obviously I want a secure uh, storage for everyone because I definitely don't want to compromise our data because <laughs> I, I don't need to tell you that data is everything nowadays I mean if you if you lose your data you lose everything I mean you lose your business you lose your credibility integrity everything in front of your clients so uh, absolutely this is a very uh, crucial part in terms of uh, the security that you have to choose the right security option uh, not a security option I mean to say the storage option for your clients for your organization so like I said uh, they, they requested us to provide a storage option for everyone in the organization I have heard these kind of feedback from my engineers and uh, all other colleagues that said okay Hirsch, why don't we choose Microsoft OneDrive I mean we can choose Google Drive and uh, I mean Dropbox box I mean all other kind of uh, you know online storage solutions that actually offers great solution uh, while managing your storages but uh, frankly from the organizational prospect uh, perspective or the enterprise level uh, uh, analyze I mean analysis if you do these analysis with the enterprises I don't think so uh, these personal individual storage uh, option uh, is actually good for the organization purpose uh, what is the overall meaning here is don't be confused about these individual storage option for example Microsoft OneDrive obviously Google Drive etc Dropbox uh, because they don't actually provide you uh, lots of functionality while managing your organizational data yes if it is a smaller team or a little bit bigger team yes they do uh, say that okay you can share your data uh, only the limited people can access your data these functionalities are very basic but uh, if you think about the old time uh, network uh, file uh, server or in other words we call it NFS so that time we were looking for ACLs we are looking for security options uh, I mean larger file size I mean there are certain capabilities certain requirement that we need to fulfill in a different kind of scenario so this there is something that we need to talk about more in this video so likewise I said when you discuss about the rest API which means we have to think about the solution uh, which need to be given to these application developers or the website developers so that they can choose the right storage option obviously we'll discuss about all these storage options under storage accounts we have the queue storage we have a table storage we have a blob storage, which is absolutely uh, kind of famous one I mean around the globe whenever uh, people I mean the developers would like to use the storage blob storage is their first choice just for your reference we have a uh, two different kind of other storage option available as well uh, that is specifically used where the scenario comes for Azure virtual machines or on premises uh, this uh, data sharing or in other words we call it the file storage where uh, we store the file we apply the permission I mean the authorization for the user etc etc these all uh, the points that we are going to discuss about so uh, for that uh, requirement uh, file storage is the first choice for these certain on-premises uh, uh, organization where they're still using <laughs> though personally in my experience uh, very less people uh, now like to use the on-premises environment but okay we are in, I'm in India <laughs> at this moment I'm in Chandigarh uh, northern part of India so I, I still heard that some of the organization not the bigger ones but the medium or the small organization still are dependent here in India on on-premises in fact if you uh, go to uh, Australia New Zealand US as per my experience while handling the clients over there uh, they all have the similar on-premises environment and they uh, are having problem with the storages so we obviously suggest them to use Microsoft Azure storage accounts so that they can share all of their data using file storage we'll discuss more about it so <laughs> don't worry but this is just the, uh, the very basic information for everyone which is certainly required for the examination in AZ104 and the last option that we have is uh, the uh, disk storage uh, the disk storage is automatically created under the storage accounts 
with the name of the file name is actually VHD. You heard about it, I'm sure. Uh, the VHD files are responsible for, uh, for the operating system that we usually create and actually create a, a, a very uh, kind of a virtual disk basically. And this virtual disk is responsible for to have the complete operating system of your virtual machine that you actually create in the Microsoft Azure. So that's a very basic that you need to know. We'll discuss more about it. What are the advantages? Uh, what are the use case for all and each and every these, uh, I mean, storage options that you have. Obviously, we also discuss about uh, the security, the security uh, about all of these. Some are common security parameters. Some we can specifically choose in the certain criteria. And we'll touch base today, uh, one of them. And obviously, the next is uh, managing and accessing uh, storage uh, accounts. So we are, like I said, not going to just talk about the storage options. We'll discuss about the functionality, uh, what other features been offered by Microsoft Azure. So yeah, I am uh, <laughs> also want to say I'm so thrilled, so excited to be back with all of you guys. I'm sure you missed me <laughs> because I miss you all very much. And don't worry, I'm, uh, I'll be here now and I won't go anywhere and we'll uh, certainly continue start working on the cybersecurity certifications as well. Stay tuned, you will have a lot to learn with me and I'm sure you are learning with me at this moment. So anyway, let's move to the next step and try to learn more about Microsoft Azure storage accounts. Azure storage accounts provide you the solution for the storage. <laughs> That's it, that is what it is. The second thing, you have to choose the right storage solution based on the requirement. That is the second thing you have to know. And obviously the third thing, that how you're gonna create the Azure storage account. It's fairly simple and easy, but there are a couple of things that you need to know while creating the storage accounts. Obviously we'll discuss about all those points in this upcoming video series in AZ104. So if you want to begin with the storage solution, I mean, how you're gonna start creating the Azure storage accounts in Microsoft Azure, fairly simple. First, either you go here and type storage accounts, that's the first option you can choose, obviously, or you simply, if you recently worked in the, I mean, uh, recently worked in the storage account, then you can certainly find here all those options. The in interesting thing about this is uh, to create this, there are certain parameters that you need to be very well aware. What is the purpose of it? How you're gonna learn or use that all for a purpose? So if you start creating the solution uh, for the storage in Microsoft Azure, just hit create. Then under the subscription, obviously you choose the right subscription. Second, under the resource group, you have to either create a new resource group. If you already have the resource group, likewise me, I already created Harsh Arena, I mean short form of Harsh Arena is HA. I'm gonna choose this one. And obviously you have to give the name. Give any name you like. I give name Harsh Arena Storage, which is fine. But mind you, as you can see under the storage account name, I only choose the lower case. I don't use any uppercase or the spatial character. Why is that? Because if I choose uppercase or any other spatial character, it won't allow you to create the storage account name. So mind you, you have to choose all of your characters using the lowercase, no uppercase at all. The second interesting thing, which you need to be very, very well aware that region you have to choose very carefully because there are certain situations where you have to deal with the slow accessibility of your storages and where you can find these kind of situation for example right now i am in chandigarh kind of like nearby new delhi northern part of india and if i choose my storage solution as us uh, west us east us whatever i mean japan another example japan or us or africa or any other country. Obviously, the latency, the request go from India to that location and come back with the results would definitely take time. So when we discuss about this in the technical firm, technical perspective, the name is called latency. So if you have the low latency, 
means you have the high performance and how you're going to get the low latency once you have the storage solution nearest extremely nearest to your location so you have to make your mind that choose your region wisely this is absolutely extremely on the top of the <laughs> i mean it's so important for you to choose the right region otherwise you definitely find some lags or your application developer or your web developer or any other user who is using these uh, i mean uh, uh, these uh, storage solution may have some interruption some kind of feedback that hey I'm not getting the right response or sometimes you also have these uh, question all right Harsh okay imagine my person okay if I choose here US data center and my user traveling to US how about that situation guys <laughs> you still have the same uh, problem why because orchestrator in AZ900 I discuss about the orchestrator the orchestrator take responsibility to create all these virtual solution in Azure virtual infrastructure and basically what it does it actually create a kind of a connection between India I mean where I am sitting right now or whatever the region I choose to that location and usually even the person traveling to US they're still having the problem because first the request is coming to the orchestrator which is sitting in India and then take again your request back to the US and same way it is getting the response as well so don't be confused just discuss with your superiors your operation team member or who is leading your team just ask the person or if you are leading just choose the right solution or I mean right region that is why I explained that all the stuff at the same time all right the second thing about the performance guys there are two kind of options available standard and the premium and I want to tell you both are quite responsive I mean you won't find any lags or any problem uh, you get the low latency you get the great performance but if you think about the huge larger uh, analytics kind of condition for example you have uh, lots of CSV files you have lots of Excel file that you want to actually uh, store at one place and you want to analyze it using big data service and all that kind of thing then I think the standard solution is the right solution for you because it offers you data lake functionality I'll discuss about it more a little bit more but just for your ref reference purpose and if you choose premium extremely high performance uh, uh, you can get from it but here you have to choose wisely I mean here it is divided into page blob in fact I'll show you okay this is what exactly I was talking about the premium account type you can find block blobs file share and the page blob. Means what is the purpose or the use case here for to create your storage account if you choose the block blobs the first one obviously it is for the high transactions that you have a lots of requests the people are uploading the file downloading the file like the wallpaper website as an example where or even uh, the movie website where people are downloading the movies uploading the movies and all that stuff you need a very uh, high transaction rates there the second thing is for the file share likewise I discussed where you're looking for uh, a kind of the organizational uh, setup where you need to share your uh, storage with other members as well but you get an extremely high performance from your application where your data is uploading maybe your application is deployed in this file share uh, location I mean overall all in all when you need a, a great responses from uh, for your all organization uh, point of view then obviously second choice is the right one and no need to mention it is uh, always in a in a good scale I mean you can enlarge up to 500 terabyte storage you can add into the file share as an example but if you are looking for more than that then I believe you can just raise a support ticket and uh, the team I if I'm not wrong at least 50 petabyte they can help uh, I'm not 100% sure about this but I think I have received similar kind of situation a uh, couple of years back and I think the storage team are capable to increase that from the back end but it is only for the enterprise customer not the regular consumers not for them they have the limitation 500 terabytes not more than that 
and the last one is the page blob uh, the page blob is for the uh, basically uh, how I can give you the explanation uh, for example the people are actually uh, uploading these CSV files they want to read the information they want to alter the information you want read and write operation continuously because these Excel files these CSV files have lots of uh, tables lots of kind of data being managed so if you want to use this kind of situation then I think the third one is the right one for you but here you have to choose only one option it is not gonna use for all but if you want to use all of these scenarios and you're not looking for extremely uh, great performances standard is still great <laughs> you won't find a big change or big difference at all so you choose here uh, I'm gonna follow the standard one and yeah one more thing one more important thing standard and premium guys money matters <laughs> so mind you uh, so here what you need to keep in your mind uh, before to submit the information you need to first collect the details that okay approximate how much storage space we are looking for for our organization because accordingly you have to go to the Azure price calculator you can search from Google and easily find out and then search for the storage as well I mean how much money you have you are going to spend every month if you choose standard or premium <laughs> you can certainly find a big differences so budget is everything for the organization so please be careful while choosing this option this uh, okay <laughs> let's move to the next one we have this redundancy option in the redundancy we have locally redundant storage geo redundant zone and geo zone redundant we, I'll discuss about all of these uh, in the upcoming video but at this moment I'll just choose the locally redundant storage option when we go to the advanced uh, we find a very basic one rest API operation for the secure transfer so guys whenever we discuss about this which it means we are discussing about HTTPS protocol so if you choose this one it only and only gonna work with HTTPS only which is a good sign obviously we definitely don't want uh, port number 80 to be <laughs> to be used for our uh, you know secure purpose or whatever the websites we are going to deploy nowadays it's a kind of a tradition that everybody wants a secure uh, connection between your website and to the user so uh, another is uh, allowing enabling anonymous access guys this is uh, for the uh, blob storage basically if you enable this which means anyone from the world I mean I, I want to repeat again anyone without any restriction are able to access your blob storage obviously we can change these settings later on so it's okay but as a recommendation it is not a good idea to uh, enable this it, it makes as a disable but that's a recommendation I don't say you always have to disable it it depends on the requirement again okay so mind you uh, enable uh, storage account key account. yeah this is so important uh, I'll discuss about it but at this moment I uh, just want to mention uh, this enable storage account key access means it's all about security I'll discuss about that how this security gonna help uh, you as an administrator and how the application developer and your web developer is going to discuss about this with you once it has been deployed for your organization the next one we have is the Microsoft Entra ID authorization in the Azure portal yes of course uh, this is a good idea because if your users all are in all uh, because there are two kind of conditions one you have deployed your local on-premises uh, infrastructure where you are running Windows Server 2012 2016 maybe 2019 and all of the users are using local authorization uh, to authenticate or authorize your user in that scenario disable it but if your users has been transferred or been migrated from on-premises to Microsoft Azure Active Directory which in other words nowadays we call it Entra Microsoft Entra <laughs> it's all the same no, no difference at all so uh, in that scenario you have to enable it but at this moment I'll just keep it as a default because we can change it later on if we want to uh, TLS version 1.2 which is absolutely okay the highest version uh, good in terms of security uh, copy operation that's okay preview I don't want to touch it because it's not been completely deployed as yet and uh, yeah this is important enable hierarchical uh, namespace so basically this is all about the data lake that we I discuss about on the initial page so basically this storage can enables you to do the you know kind of uh, uh, 
uh, analytics based on your files. You have CSV file, you have other formats where the data has been uh, there. And for example, you are collecting data from US, India, Brazil, Mexico, China, Japan, all of the other countries and combine and store in one storage account. Now you want to play with the uh, big data or I mean where the data analytics, uh, you know, have to deal with it. it. It actually process the whole data and come back with the results and you can use all of this big data. Actually, it is for uh, uh, PSYOPs, we call it uh, operation for the system. So uh, indeed, it is really important where the big, big terabytes and the petabytes data is collecting from different location and you want to analyze all of them at the same time, then yes, you have to enable this feature because as soon as you enable, there's two options is automatically enabled for you. SFTP, which is secure FTP and network file system. This is again a, a kind of a security system where you can uh, use for the storage account to use your, you know, share your files, access your files around the globe. But at this moment, I'm not going to enable it because as soon as I disable it, both of these features are quite disabled. So it's okay at this moment. Uh, when we have a separate video for this, I'll try to uh, bring something for you so that you can play and understand how we're going to use uh, this big data analytics in this Azure storage accounts. Uh, while moving forward, we have this crossed uh, tenant replication we we'll discuss in detail about the cross tenant replication including access tiers at this moment i leave it as like this and obviously we have azure files enable large file share so if you want to share more more than like for example 5 gb file or like that so obviously you have to enable this feature otherwise it's okay at this moment because i don't have that much big file um, go to networking. Uh, I want to cover up this networking stuff in a very separate video in AZ104. We'll complete that. Don't worry. And uh, when we go to the data protection, this is something you need to understand. Uh, I personally suffer a lot in the past back in 2014, 2015, because this feature was not available at that time under storage accounts. And what happened usually, uh, you know, people accidentally not I, I, <laughs> I cannot say purposely but accidentally they actually delete all of their data under the storage account or accidentally they delete the complete storage account and in fact they have the data inside that which is quite important to them in the past there was no way to recover except you submit the uh, submit the uh, request and uh, obviously you have to be uh, enterprise customer or the premier customer Apart from that, you also have the big uh, exposure in the world. For example, I met a situation, I, I discussed the same in the past videos as well. I met a situation of Brazilian, uh, this uh, Brazilian what? Parliament. <laughs> I, I can't forget that scenario. But anyway, uh, they accidentally deleted the data. So the team helped uh, to recover each and everything for them. But now what we have is by default we set the days for seven days if you delete the data in the blobs or in the containers or in the file share automatically you can go to the option where you have the soft delete option and you are able to recover your data within those seven days but mind you <laughs> this is something which i need to tell you seven days means your data still available in the storage so means you are gonna pay for those seven days because sometimes you, you think hey why don't we change to 30 days right yeah guys i mean you can change it but you have to pay extra for that mind you because this is something people don't think about and once the money is generated in azure and then they have to submit the report <laughs> then they have to hear a lot of uh, bad words from the senior management that who said who told you to enable these settings for 30 days because Deleted means deleted. Yeah, five days, two days, it's fine, but not for 30 days. So again, be careful, again, based on your requirement. Uh, regarding the tracking and access control, these are the new features we'll certainly discuss about in the separate video. If I go to the encryption, I uh, just want to say at this moment, uh, we are going to follow Microsoft Managed Key, which is MMK. 
uh, if you have uh, your own certificate authority or a dedicated server then you have to get your URI link from where you know your keys is gonna be generated and stored and once you have that you can also save there if you don't want to save in Microsoft at this moment but obviously I'm gonna follow the default MMK which is fine with me and it is gonna work for blobs and files only if you wanna select everything it's all up to you again <laughs> for me it's absolutely uh, easy I mean I just follow the same and the last thing is uh, enable infrastructure encryption this is uh, this is the another third layer of security that data at rest is also going to be encrypted once it is reached to the server of the Microsoft so I, I highly recommend you choose this one but remember uh, this may take a little bit while and of course uh, cost you extra so <laughs> I don't want to play at this moment because I don't want to pay but yeah indeed this is for your information uh, if you like to play with this it's okay tags no need to mention at this moment and now we are ready with the review and create so once we are ready to create this uh, frankly speaking guys it won't take more than 15 to 20 seconds it's gonna finish within 15 seconds and then your storage account is ready to use so I'll wait for next 15-20 seconds and uh, then once it is deployed I'll be back and then continue with the explanation. There you go. The storage account is ready to use. It's fairly easy. So once you go to the go to resource and if you go to the resource at this moment leave everything on your screen. You have to just focus on this place. The blob service because it's going to create four different kind of data storage option blob service with lots of features as you can see on the screen that is why i said number one uh, <laughs> it's a favorite for everyone i mean developers it's number one for them the second is file service we still have the some of the feature which is okay we'll discuss about this more and we have the queue services and of course we have a table services along with four different uh, kind of storage options we have for the data we also have the security, we'll discuss about it. Some of the features we already seen during the time of the creation, you can enable and disable later on, like I said. And of course the networking, this is uh, almost a similar or the same feature you can find during the time of the creation. So what we are going to learn now, that how and when and in where, I mean, one, what particular scenario is there or what particular use cases are there for blobs to service, file service queue service and the table service we'll discuss about all of these and then step by step we go to the security and then move on with the next option so so let's go back to our slide and try to understand based on the use cases why and where we are going to use all of these data storage options we are now confident enough to create microsoft azure storage accounts in microsoft azure and it's not a difficult task to create it it is all about how you're gonna start using the right solution in terms of storage for the organizational purpose so what we are going to discuss here in this section is all about what are the possible use cases you can think of or you can met in your day-to-day -day life in the real world and how you're gonna use these storage options to take all the advantages of all the management security features within Microsoft Azure so right here, uh, obviously we are gonna start with what is Microsoft Azure uh, storage account for us. It's, it's a kind of a cloud platform, uh, storage platform for us that can uh, provide tons of features for the organizational storage purposes because uh, whenever you have to think about the organization or enterprises, you have to certainly, uh, you know, things need to be keep in your mind that we are talking about users we are talking about a huge uh, amount of storage so people can definitely use and obviously availability. I mean, we definitely want that our users, you know, can use these storage options 24 by 7, 365 days, wherever they go. So <laughs> exactly my point. I mean, the storage platform for Microsoft Azure under the storage account can provide you all these facilities it's massively scalable I mean you can think of the 500 terabyte by default and you can increase it later on based on the requirement that's not a big deal you have to just raise a request 
with the Microsoft support and they can certainly help you out. It's always durable. I mean, security features are there for you. Uh, the uh, management features are there for you where you can start managing all your solutions. And the very, very good thing and kind of a, a very special about Microsoft Azure is, uh, let's say you are running um, kind of the authentication methods, whether you like to use Azure Active Directory, which we call nowadays Microsoft Entra, or maybe you like to use uh, on-premises Active Directory. In all these scenarios, or, or yeah, one more thing, <laughs> the hybrid solution. I mean, if you are using Microsoft Entra as well as on-premises Active Directory, if your users are on those both sides, still you can use your Microsoft Azure storage account, storage options for your organizational purpose. So, I mean, these, these are the possible things that you need to keep in your mind while discuss about the storage account. What else we need to think about? It's all about the, uh, you know, kind of uh, use cases that you can met in your day-to-day -day life in the real world that you are currently working on. So, uh, let's begin with the storage options or we call it uh, the type of the storage account uh, that offer to us all those data storage options. So I want to start with the number one solution that is blob storage. Now what that is, how it is going to help us and what are the possible use case that you can think of if you like to use blob storage. So guys, uh, let's, let's imagine uh, if anyone, I mean anyone in the sense, let's start with the Microsoft Azure. This is the Microsoft Azure AZ and pardon me my slow <laughs> experience here uh, with the mouse and b means blob so i'm considering this is the blob storage and uh, everybody especially the web uh, developers and the application developers are looking for a storage option where they like to build an application or maybe a website where they like to use the storage option for uploading the files it it could be anything it doesn't matter uh, what kind of file type you are using maybe you are using you like to take a selfie maybe you like to upload the pdf document or maybe you have some xls files maybe you have some csv files or maybe you are collecting some additional PDF files or any other kind of file type, maybe movies. I mean, I don't know. It is all the possibilities are there for you. The bottom line is to understand about the blob storage that it does not care what kind of files you like to choose or you like to store within this storage option. Because blob just understand binary, zero, one, zero, one. So it means you can choose any file type you like to use and obviously what are the best possible ways in terms of use cases uh, that a developer the application developer has a requirement that they want to build an application where they are collecting uh, the files for you I, I give you one example well, based on the application digilocker in india i mean i don't need to tell you in the digilocker you have all those government ids uh, consolidated uh, placed in one place how is it possible because uh, your data is actually been uh, connected via contact number or maybe some other ways and basically what it does for us when when you start uploading the file it actually stored in a kind of a small container don't worry in a practical manner I will also show you uh, I have a name uh, for example my name is with one eye is a Cool, handsome guy that's fine <laughs> now this the name of this guy is Hirsch so what it does whenever the Hirsch is trying to use an application and up, try to upload uh, the file uh, like maybe a PDF file maybe my own selfie it actually create a container inside the blob storage and store all of the data under that place so next time if somebody wants to modify I mean if Hirsch wants to modify the data it goes to the certain blob storage and obviously modify the data or the file that you want to use that is one of the use case obviously same or similar like the web developer as well if the web developer uh, like to build a uh, website which definitely trying to collect the the documents like pdfs or any other kind of document that we like to store into the blob storage which is a certain uh, ways because likewise I said it's open for everyone anybody can use 
it's not about anonymous but anybody in the sense uh, <laughs> it's just a storage available to you you can use the way you want obviously yeah it can require some kind of access possibility that we will talk about in this video but indeed i think you get my point whenever we have this uh, kind of scenario where the application developer and the web developer like to store some files or maybe would like to make a, a kind of a website which has netflix like content so what would be the best choice they have they have a blob storage so i don't need to tell you more about it but i mean this is the criteria this is the possibility that you can get from uh, these developers requirements so obviously the first choice is always be blob storage obviously other other options like security 24 by 7 availability hot tiers uh, access control everything you can find in the blob storage we'll discuss about in upcoming videos as well so please don't worry this is the basic understanding that you need to keep in your mind i also discuss about this uh, block blob storage and the page blob storage it's all about the premium uh, level facility that you have a greater performance uh, you can get low latency you get you can have uh, right i mean transaction speed would be uh, extremely good as compared to the standard storage that we could have usually as an as a normal user <laughs> we don't find a big difference but uh, this is the real thing i mean uh, if you are talking about the millions of millions transaction at the same time then i would definitely suggest to go for the premium storage so i hope you get the idea that why and where we have to use the blob storage so the next thing uh, i would like to talk about is file storage first which is the second most uh, used uh, storage option in terms of the real world so uh, the file storage <laughs> we called it Azure files as well now where we have to use this so imagine guys you have an on-premises infrastructure let me make this uh, more interesting I don't know what that is but yeah I make it more interesting so this is our on-premises I, I write down on P storage option I mean not a storage option <laughs> don't be confused it's on-premises infrastructure where we have lots of users lots of computers running inside the organization so guys in the past what we used to do here we always like to use nfs not need for speed <laughs> don't be confused like uh, me when i was uh, reading this for the first time i say hmm, nfs wow when people like to use nfs in their environment so it's not need for speed it's a network file storage or network file share i mean the way they want to use it so the purpose of using the nfs is we can have a sharing option obviously that's one option the second thing is we could have controls i mean we could have acls acls means you can uh, authorize one user to have the ownership of a certain file or the folder similarly you can assign other person with the right permission and the another person <laughs> with the read permission i think you get my point apart from that obviously you can have those uh, storage solution for individual users where the authorization and the authentication is required so in all these uh, you know customized solution uh, nfs is always a right choice but the problem here nowadays is um, obviously you have to think about the storages all right so you have this hard drive and as soon as it start filling up you need to add one more similarly you have to keep adding one more if more storage is required so it's not uh, uh, that much great in terms of managing storages and obviously you need a dedicated team for the hardware dedicated team for the networking as well as you need to rethink about your uh, capex as well because you need to buy additional storage so in case any of the storage is down you definitely have the other hard drive so you can hot swappable in to the storage and then it's available for everyone then you need to configure this rate solutions the old time standards ha huh. <laughs> i talk a lot about this just to make you uh, the aware uh, about this so guys uh, nowadays the cloud solution is always be a good one why because now also if you have the storage server in on premises you don't require a public ip to deal with this directly so i don't say that you don't need to use it obviously in many different scenario you have to have 
public IP address for your organization so that you can directly interact uh, with the world and uh, I, I am not gonna take you in that deep down scenario where <laughs> public IP is required but basically just imagine public IPs are used for to connect your organization around the globe that's it so in other scenario what we are talking about is the Azure files now what it does for us after creating the uh, storage account in Azure so let me make Azure for you this is Azure in Azure, we create a storage account and we would like to use Azure files. So what would be the ideal situation? One way, if you configure Azure files, people over the internet, I mean, wherever I go, I can still access my storage option through the internet, which is easy, right? You, you guys know. But what about those people who like to use uh, storage of Microsoft Azure from on-premises? So for that specific, the solution is uh, obviously Azure files, <laughs> but how we are going to achieve it, just to give you the background, first step, we need to connect both on-premises to Microsoft Azure using ExpressVPN. Uh, <laughs> again, my bad, my apologies, it's not ExpressVPN, it's uh, Express Route. Sorry guys, because I'm using ExpressVPN sometime whenever I like to access some other country's website. So it is, you know, these words are always on my, in my mouth, I can say. <laughs> so my apologies, it's not ExpressVPN, it's Express Route. Express Route actually allows you to connect your on-premises infrastructure to Microsoft Azure privately. But along with the Azure, you have to create a VNet. In VNet, we are gonna uh, actually establish a private endpoint. We have to create an endpoint. Endpoint actually uh, exists in Microsoft Azure, which knows, okay, this on-premises public IP is directly connected to this endpoint and only responsible to connect directly with the Microsoft Azure securely and nobody intercept the connection during the, you know, the communication usually happen between these two sites. If your user are sitting somewhere like over the internet, they like to use site to site VPN. Obviously that's another uh, option that you have to use so that you can connect privately within your own organization data shared that is actually configured in the file storage. But just to uh, bring uh, this example for you, the purpose is just to understand what are the possible use cases you can think of uh, when you have to use the right storage for your solution. So if your organization is looking for the on-premises, but looking for a cloud solution, I think this is the complete step that you can offer them. And then later on, they have to choose what would be the right choice for them because here's the budget is involved, money is involved. So they have to rethink. And yeah, good thing is in Azure files, you can still use the same thing. I mean, the old time SMB, if you are using a uh, Linux uh, box or I mean Linux operating system, they can still use uh, Azure files because it supports SMB protocol. It also has NTFS support system, which is, which is good. In the old time, I mean right here, we used in the past, but obviously it supports NTFS. We still can do map network drive as well. I mean, if you have configured uh, file storage or Azure files, within Microsoft Azure storage account, you can still map the network drive directly in your on-premises. But again, like I said, you always have to connect with your S2S, site-to-site -site VPN with Azure. Only then you are able to access. Otherwise, uh, by default, it's not a good idea. You can directly connect with Azure files uh, without having a secure connection between your sites because if your data is crucial, uh, it's really uh, confidential, then I think Express Route would be the right way to move forward. So that's the explanation of Azure files. I hope you get the point, but in case if you are struggling to understand the concept, feel free to let me know. So that's Azure file storage for you. Now let's go to the third one, which I like to talk about first is queue storage. Now, what is the queue storage? Um, let me think over it <laughs> because uh, to give you the right example, it is all about always, uh, always always important for me so that I can try to use the easy way to make you understand about the concepts. Okay, uh, all right, I get the point. So uh, if you want to understand the queue storage, 
let's think about a scenario where we have this is a kind of a environment that we have created where we have website this is website second is we have a front-end server f i hope you get this easily uh in the front-end server we also have uh another front-end server or you can say failover front-end server so if one of the uh you know uh fail safe situation i have created basically if a website is trying to connect with the front-end server and somehow it fails it can go from this side as well now from the back end uh, you can have a sql server because we maybe like to store some data for the user and we also have a storage as well so this is a very complex infrastructure and think about in one scenario we are not just we are not just offering one thing from our website we have uh, the netflix like content we are selling our products we have uh, we are collecting some data i mean from the user i just want you to imagine about all these possibilities uh, i could have uh, um yeah music storage as well i'm uh, also uh, selling my product for uh, for final cut pro or adobe lightroom or maybe any other product as well i mean it's a very complex big websites so uh, the point here is whenever you have to communicate the this user uh, user have two eyes smart man and this is the user so this user send a request to the website and then web website connect with the right front end server if you have multiple front end servers and then goes to the right database or the storage or i mean the back end server then it gives you all the solution overall if you have a million and trillions of transactions at the same time single web server is not a good choice to respond all of that request because you can imagine that front uh, front end server and all these other servers uh, will be quite busy in responding to all those requests so what is the ideal situation nowadays uh, based on if you are not using an extremely big scenario because if you are using an extremely big scenario then the service bus uh, would be the choice for you but i am not here to talk about the service bus i'm here for the queue storage now how the queue storage works for you same thing but in a different manner here we have a web server same scenario but now before front end servers i have the queue storage so what it does for us it will connect with let me just make other f servers as well just to make you understand so it would be easy for you so what it does for us let's say this is our sql server and one more we have a storage server as well okay so whenever the request coming from the users it goes to from the front end or oh, sorry web site to the queue storage now what it does for us it start uh, having those messages and whatever the request is coming from okay i like to watch the movie that's one request I like to purchase the product based on Adobe. That's a second request and different request. I like to purchase a mobile phone from your website. Third request. Similarly, we have four, we have five, we have six. So what the queue storage does for us, it actually store all these information and then transmit all these requests in the messages, messages to all of these different uh, servers that we have in the back end based on the requirement okay uh, this user like to access the storage this like to this user like to access the sql server this user like to access front end server number 1 this user like to access front front end server number 2 so all these messages coming to this so overall this website is free and said okay keep sending to your messages because i have a queue storage and the queue kind of server which collects the information from me and sending the right messages to the right server so in the complex uh, scenario when you have for your websites and from your developers in that scenario queue storage would be the right choice but if you have more than that i mean like i said if you have a extremely more complex scenario then the service bus would be the right choice which is a part of the microsoft azure and uh, in upcoming certification i'll talk about the service bus uh, hopefully i'll try to make a scenario for you as well so you, you can play you can understand and you can learn more about this but i hope you get the point where we have to use the queue storage then we have the table storage because table storage and the queue storage 
works a little bit differently. Uh, in the table storage, it's a smaller version of the SQL Server. Understand you like this. So the scenario is uh, we like to collect the XLS file. We like to collect uh, CSV files. And obviously we like to store our database with the table format. Table format means uh, in the tables we have, let's say, uh, username. We have a uh, designation. We have uh, uh, any other D. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, L location where this user actually sitting right now. I mean, these are the tables uh, you can find commonly from the CSV file and the XLS file. And you like to manage them in a kind of a format so that if you like to retrieve any of these information, it will be easy for you. Likewise, you do all these operation within the SQL Server. But it's a smaller uh, database for you. It's not uh, gonna handle up big, huge enterprises. Yeah, it is for the small organization and small medium organization where the number of users are quite limited. So if you like to play with the big players, I mean big numbers, SQL Server is that there for you in the Microsoft Azure. So that is all about the storages. So in this scenario, you can use all these different kinds of scenarios. And the last remaining is uh, the disk storage. So to understand the disk storage, just remember whenever we create a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure, it always create a VHD file. VHD means virtual hard drive. So what it actually has is all about the operating system that you install. The storage given to you, let's say I have 250 GB assigned from the storage account for the disk storage. So basically it consists of uh, the partition, but it's all virtually available, right? So it helps us to make multiple operating system uh, by using the virtualization concept. Uh, in Microsoft, we are using Hyper-V. Uh, you, uh, you, you already heard of, I think, uh, VMware uh, as well, uh, where we have ESX servers and all that kind of thing. We center to connect all these operating systems and everything there. So in Microsoft Azure, you can have these all storage options with the different kind of scenarios that I discussed with you on the screen. I hope it helps you to understand better uh, that in what use cases you have to use these all different data storage options. So to now more uh, about to start working on these different kind of storages and what kind of uh, security features usually offered by the Microsoft Azure for the data storages, especially I'm talking about the blob storage here. Let's go back uh, to the Microsoft Azure and learn more about it. But yeah, before to go, I like to repeat one more time. Any confusion, drop a message and I will be, I will be there to help you out to clarify your questions. So now we are in Microsoft Azure portal and let's begin to understand how we're going to start making those storage options for a use purpose for our scenarios. So start with the blob service first or the blob storage first. How you're going to deal with this? How you're going to start with creating the blob service or blob storage available for all the application developers and the web developers. So to start with this, on the left hand side, you have a data storage option. Under the data storage option, you can have the containers. So you have to click on this container option. As soon as you click on container, you will see this is the blank page. Obviously, this log store container is automatically created. I have not created this. So how are you going to start creating the containers that can allow you to store the files? Because don't even think once the blob storage is ready under the storage account, you can simply give access to the you know application developer. You, you don't give in the real world just like this, the access of this one. If you like to give the access, the first step is you have to create the container. So once you click on container, on the right hand side, you have to give the name. And here you have to follow the same rule. You have to use all lowercase while creating the container name. So I give the name, for example, users, um, photo. You can give any name you like, it's up to you. The second is anonymous access level. As you can see, it's currently disabled. If you remember uh, that while creating the storage account, we have an option that you want to enable the anonymous access or not. So I disable that by default. So that is why you have this option like this. Otherwise, 
Uh, you can also enable it later on in the settings. I'll talk about that later. But at this moment, I'll use as default. And under the advanced, you have an option like select from the existing account scope. Obviously, there's nothing more. So if there's no more information that we can use, simply click create. Once you select create and you will see here's a user's photo. Similarly, if you like to give one, uh, for example, one container access to the application developer and one container access to web developer, you have to create a separate container for that as an example. So don't be confused, but here as an example, if you like to play with this, just go to the container, start with uploading the picture. So click on upload. Here's an option that you would like to use, like, okay, you wanna browse your photograph. I have this photograph on my machine at this moment. I'm gonna open this and automatically it will ask you, hey, do you wanna use it? Uh, I mean, go ahead, or you can simply choose advanced, it's up to you. In advanced, you have option like block blob, faster speed. As you know, you wanna use page blob or append blob, it's all up to you. Right now, I'll choose as default. I don't change anything. The block size would be 4 MB as of now. You can increase up to you. Access tier, all other thing, the, if you have already created the folder specifically in terms uh, with the name of tags, you can use this. Otherwise, leave as it is. Don't make any changes. And click on upload and you will see your file is available right here now the next step all right this is just to show you how you're going to start uploading the file but obviously the application developers and the web developers don't follow the same way to deal with this so what they used to do in that scenario the first thing first on the left hand side you have this settings right you have to go to token shared access token click on this so automatically this is the responsibility of an administrator to give the token access. What does it mean? Basically, we are planning to discuss about the authorization that who is authorized to have the access of this blob storage container. So when you play around with this scenario, you have to deal with this couple of things. Start with the thing, your account key or user delegation key. User delegation key can be assigned later on, I mean, which, which can be customized, but at this moment, I'm gonna follow the key, because why is that? First of all, Microsoft generate these keys. If you remember, while creating the storage account, we have that option called MMK, Microsoft Managed Key. And I told you at that time, the size of this key is 512 bits which is extremely good in terms of security. If you wanna give somebody this key, they have to have, and I mean, they have to match the exact data or the information that you already have in the keys. I'll talk about this more, that where you can find this key one, key two, all that, because if you click here under the signing key, you have two different key. So how are you gonna play with this? For example, for the application developer, you can give the key one. And for other container, for the web developer, you can use key two. And of course, the question is, can we use the same key one for other one as well? Yes, of course, yes, no question about it. Now, once you have the key one as an example, now you have the option called access policy. We'll talk about the access policy in a different video, not in this one. But if you create any access policy, you can use here based on your client requirement. Now, what kind of permission you like to give to that particular user. You wanna give just simply read access, add access. So obviously read and add would be the fine or sufficient for me at this scenario. But you can choose more, create, write, delete, all that options. The next thing is quite interesting that uh, you can obviously give the time frame that how many days it is gonna be applicable for those application developers. In the real world practice in general, uh, we used to give, uh, I mean, access based on the project size. I mean, for example, if uh, the application developer comes up with the uh, details that, hey, we're gonna run this forever, then obviously I will assign uh, the access of this one for let's say one year. I give the time for next one year and that to be all, that's for me. But if, uh, you know, you are running a pilot project for 10 days, 20 days, or maybe 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, 
Based on that, you can choose the time frame and this sharing of this, or I mean authorization of this particular container will be applicable only for that particular time. That is what I need to mention. If you're running a very highly secure environment, you can only dedicate it, assign the IP address that is allowed also to access this blob container. Apart from that, uh, like I said, uh, which protocol you like to assign? I always, always go for HTTPS instead of HTTP, obviously. Now, once you're ready with all these details correctly, simply click on generate SAS token and URL. Now, it will generate two things, blob SAS token, blob SAS URL. You have to give these both detailed information to your developers so that they can start using the blob storage for their own application purpose or website purpose. That is how you give the access. But it is not just finished right here. Like I said, once you give this URL access, it's all about how you're going to play with the keys because key is something like this is this is a kind of a lock here and you require a key to unlock it so that you can start uploading the files. So how you're going to play with that? That is something you need to know and of course play with that. So I hope it is clear at this moment how you're going to share uh, your you know access or authorization access to your application developers and the web developers. Now let's go back to the overview. Uh, not here, I mean, let's go back to this place. And here we have the access keys, right? So click on this under the security plus networking, click on access keys. Once we click on access keys, here's the name of the storage account name at this moment. And here's the keys, right? Key one, key two. If you click show and show, you also have to give this connection string to especially to the web developers and obviously the application developers as well so that they can connect to the right storage account and nobody's going to confuse while storing the data into the storage account. Second thing, this is the key. Now, how are you going to play with this? Like I said, <clears throat> uh, in my real world, whenever I give access to my application developer or the web developer, I used to give uh, the key one access, for example, at this moment to them. And I rotate or I change this key periodically after every 30 days. Why is that? Because it is my policy. I mean, uh, it's not like somebody defined. It is all up to you, all based on the operation lead, that how many days they want to rotate the key so that these application developers and the web developers come back to you again via an official email and you write down the new key for them as well. So how are you going to start with this? You have to do the manual step for this. So let's say rotate key. Once you click, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. It generates a new key for you. And then once you generate a new key, the old key is gone now. So the access of the blob storage is also inaccessible for all those people who are using that application or the website. So what the developers has to do, they have to come back to you, ask for the new key, you give the new key and they're good to go. Similarly, you can use the key two as well for their purpose. I mean, for other users purpose. Uh, if you are having another storage account, you can uh, use this key as well. Or I mean, not a storage account, other container, you can use this one for them as well. So that's the purpose of this one. Additionally, the Microsoft also has given that in case you forgot, then you can remind yourself by enabling this feature and mention that, okay, remind me after every 60 days, 30 days, 30 months or years as well, once in case you like to change your key. But I used to do this practice for every 30 days. Rest, it's all up to you how you want to play with this one. So this is the first level of security in terms of authorization while you, have, you are having the storage account within Microsoft Azure. I hope it's fairly easy for you and there's no confusion how you're going to play with the access keys and the SAS token. All right, guys. So we are on the last step and I think it is very much clear to you that in what scenario you have to use your SAS token and your access keys, I'm pretty sure. So this, this is the same information which I already given you that there's a, there are two different keys 
and both of these keys are 512 bits in terms of size and obviously it's very difficult to uh, you know uh, hack these keys reason being because it's very complex and you have to use the exact same key to get the access of your blob storage similarly the purpose of these keys are just to have the right authorization access of your content or whatever the blob storage that you have created for the user and obviously the, the, the this 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 actually makes a very uh, fluent uh, communication between the developers and the administrator of the organization so that they have the the clear uh, you know uh, picture in terms of how they are managing their resources well so it also helps us in terms of protecting our storage as well because you are as an administrator are in complete control that whenever you want to change it based on the operation lead uh, you know kind of feedback or whatever uh, you heard from the application developer in that case you can take the right action and give just uh, you know completely block the access for anyone and obviously never ever enable the anonymous access of your blob storage don't worry we <laughs> we will play around with the blob storage as well more in the upcoming video but that to be all for this particular video and uh, i hope you find this video quite helpful quite informative because we have shared a lot of details in this one in terms of understanding the right data storage options for you and obviously i'm going to continuously uh, working on these videos in az104 i'll also try to come very soon with the uh, uh, cyber security certification in microsoft as well so hang on with me and obviously uh, i'd like to uh, thank you once again to be uh, very much loyal and very much uh, to be with me as a, as a subscriber and i really appreciate all the efforts you are currently making while staying with me though i was not there for too long <sighs> i'm uh, really suffering uh, currently from many things but that's okay that's my part uh, I'll, I'll try to give as much as i can give to all of you so that you can learn more you can use this knowledge in your day-to-day -day life in your job role and get more excited offers in your life thank you so much once again for watching this video i'll see you in the next one till then take care of yourself bye bye peace